We're going to finish out section 1.5 by talking about vertical asthmatotes. So this is the what and the where of vertical asthmatotes. Again, it's a very good idea to understand where you might find asthmatotes, where you should be looking for them. So vertical asthmatote occurs when f of x approaches infinity or negative infinity as x approaches c from the left or from the right. So we've already looked at this particular example. f of x is equal to 3 divided by x minus 4. And we looked at from the left and from the right what was happening. We said at x equals 4, the function is undefined. But the limit as x approaches 4 from the left was uh, of, sorry, of f of x was negative infinity and the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of f of x was positive infinity. So again, if we were to think about that function, which is a rational function, it is that is where that asymptote is going to occur. So our asymptote is going to be at x equals 4. Um, so for any rational function, we'll come back to the trig functions in a minute, but for any rational function, when our denominator equals zero, but the numerator does not. So we've already talked about discontinuities. This would be a non-removable discontinuity. Um, so let's say I had instead the function three times x plus two, and my denominator was x minus four times x plus two. So these two canceling out would not change where the vertical asymptote occurs. That asymptote would still occur at x equals 4. And then we talked about before, if it does remove, then this is just considered a hole. So if those two cancel each other out, that would be a hole and not an asymptote. And then for trig functions, again, this is just something that you need to commit to memory. Secant function and the tangent function of x both occur when x is equal to pi over 2 plus pi n for any integer n. So essentially at intervals of pi, but at the pi over 2. So that would be pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, and so on. But for cosecant and cotangent, so for the cos, we're just at pi times n, so intervals of pi at pi. Let's take a look at these four questions and determine where vertical asymptotes might occur. So for the first one, remember we're looking at the denominator of two times the quantity x plus one. So what I need is essentially, I can't let x plus one equal zero. So if x plus one equals zero, I have a problem. And that's where I can find my asymptote. So I'm gonna subtract one from each side and so my asymptote occurs at x equals negative 1. And we'll look at the graph of that as well. So this graph, if you'll notice, this has the imaginary line at x equals negative 1, where that function is going to get closer and closer and closer to that line, but never touch it. Now, one thing as we're talking about vertical asymptotes, please remember that you are telling where the function occurs. So this is not just negative one. And that's what I get a lot of students do is say negative one. But remember, this is a function, a function of x equals negative one. So it's all, it's a, an equation or the equation of a line. Let's look at the next one. I've got x minus one over x squared minus one. So this is x minus one and the denominator is the perfect square, right? So x plus one, x minus one. So x minus one cancels, and so at x minus one, there's going to be, I'm sorry, at x equals one, there's going to be a hole, not an asymptote. But notice the x plus one did not cancel. So x plus one equals zero, just like before, I have the exact same asymptote at x equals negative one. And again, looking at the graph of that function, that's where that asymptote would be. For the next question, I have the numerator. Now the numerator would factor 
into x plus 2, I'm sorry, x plus 4, x minus 2. Again, I was looking for factors of 8 with a difference of positive 2, a difference of positive 2. So that's where I came up with x plus 4, x minus 2. And my denominator, again, that's a perfect square pattern, so that's x plus 2, x minus 2. So again, the x minus 2 cancels, so at the value of x equals 2, there would be a hole, but that's not an asymptote. Um, or if it's asking you about removable or re non-removable, this would be removable. But at this function of x plus 2 equals 0, we know that x plus 2 cannot equal 0, and therefore x equals negative 2 is a vertical asymptote. And again, if I look at this graph, that's where that asymptote would be. Now the last one is cotangent of 2x. So remember when we talked about cotangent, we said that when this value was equal um, to pi n, except that's not going to work because now we're saying 2x has to equal pi n. And so essentially, instead of at multiples of pi, x is going to be at pi over 2 times n, or pi n over 2, again, where n is some integer. So instead of happening at pi and 2 pi and 3 pi and 4 pi, because we had to divide by 2, it's at basically intervals of half pi. So again, pi over 2, pi, 0, negative pi over 2, and so on. We're now going to move on to chapter 2, and we're going to start chapter 2 by looking at the slope of the tangent line using the definition of slope.